Hello, um, I'm back with a vengeance <laughs> and I'm doing a tutorial on how to make this giant cupcake, this exact giant cupcake. I'm going to split it into three. The first being how to bake the cupcake, because this is a tutorial that I do for beginners and not everybody knows how to do that. So if you already know, you can skip it and move on to the second. And the second is how I covered it with fondant and filled it. And the third is going to be split into A, B and C because I'm going to show you how I made this cake board with the inset red hearts. I'm going to show you how to make these little cookies and also this bow. <laughs> now, don't try this at home, but I decided that I would make the entire cake from scratch in one day. I know, I'm crazy. Um, but you can take your time, you can make all of the elements in advance and uh, pace yourself. But I had a deadline and I just had to do it. And I'm pretty excited about this tutorial. <laughs> really, really excited. Um, because I've looked online and I, I can't find one. <laughs> um, I haven't paid for um, a lesson how to do this and I, or I haven't downloaded anything to show me how to do this. I've just looked at pictures and thought, I want to do that. Um, and I've kind of guessed on how it's done. And this is what it looks like. And I think I've achieved what I set out to. So please give me a thumbs up because this is groundbreaking, dudes. <laughs> so let's get started. Okay, we'll start with the recipe. Um, I'm using a tried and tested recipe and the cake sponge is beautiful so um, trust me on it um, I've tried other recipes and I've played with them and uh, I've come up with this slant so um, to make the giant cupcake you will need 12 ounces of caster sugar and 12 ounces of butter so that's 395 grams and 12 ounces, 395 grams of self-raising flour, some few teaspoons of vanilla extract, and I've got some free-range eggs here, and you'll need seven of those. If, by chance, there's a little bit of mixture left over, hey, bonus, get some cupcake cases out, fill them, pop them in the oven as well, and you can have a treat too. See? I think of everything. So, just to talk briefly on the cupcake um, tin. You can buy tins and I've used them and they're a little bit more expensive. But I don't think they're as good as the cheap silicone. Um, I'll just move these out of the way, ever so slightly. Um, the cheap silicone. Simply because there's more movement and you can pop them out at the end uh, a lot easier the only key to this is um, sorry that's the bit is to grease well which I have and I've put some grease proof paper in the bottom and a little circle in the bottom of here and uh, that just helps it pop out at the very end and not to break the top of the uh, cupcake so it's up to you what you use these I swear by and this cost me about four pound <laughs> you know cheap and cheerful and do you know what it works so um, I'm going to set up now and show you how to make the basic sponge I'll be right back okay um, I've broken my seven eggs into a bowl you don't have to that's how I do it please don't complain and say well what are you doing that for that's just my preferred method and I've given them a beat um, I like the extra air but you don't have to you can just crack them in as you go <laughs> I'm using a handheld mixer um, you can use um, a stand mixer and that's absolutely fine but I'm wanting to show you that um, you can do this with a handheld no bother and just you know for beginners they probably will start off with one of those uh, and then move up to um, invest in more expensive products um, but 
this is my this to be honest with you is a fantastic way to make a cake of this size in fact um my personal preference is because it's handheld um it has more flexibility i can get in under around to the edge and uh it, it incorporates the ingredients a lot better so um, we need to cream the butter and the sugar and it's very important this stage please don't mix it through for a couple of seconds and then go oh well it's incorporated that's it it needs to change color and I'll show you what we're looking for um, so I'm gonna start creaming this now switch on the mixer and uh, I will stop at a certain stage just to show you what we're looking for, okay? We start off slow. This is a nice quiet mixer actually. It's a good little mixer this. This is the Kenwood K-Mix. Um, I'm not saying you should all go out and buy one. I'm just saying it's a... Uh, woo! I should have used a bigger bowl but hey, I've got a dishcloth I can still clean that up. So we just I'm just gonna move it up ever so slightly to a high speed and I'm turning it as I go. And that's what I mean about added flexibility with the handheld. Okay, let me just stop here. <laughs> I know this is probably you know telling you how to uh suck eggs here, but <laughs> that is not incorporated. <laughs> um it's gonna take a while so I'm going to uh, time how long it's going to take and then I'll let you know how long I mix that in, um, uh, sugar and bu butter for and uh, show you the colour difference. See how yellow it is at the moment? I'll come back and show you what it should look like. Okay, I've creamed it for about four to five minutes on and off. Um, the reason I say on and off is I switch it off and get the edges back into the centre of the bowl, like scrape them off. But as you can see, it's a very um, soft, creamy white. Maybe the camera's not picking it up, but there's definitely a difference and a difference in texture. It's soft, almost like very thick cream. Um, and that's what you're looking for because this is the creaming method um, and how it should be done correctly. Once that's incorporated properly and the sugar in the butter has become a very soft and creamy uh, texture then you're ready to go on to the second stage what you can do is add all of the ingredients together and just go for it <laughs> um, but I don't I do it into three so I put a third of the flour and a third of the eggs beat then another beet and then the final beet and I use a sieve for the flour because I want extra air to get into it. Um, I just find that by adding um, the mixture, all of the mixture at once it's not as light and I'm really into light soft sponge not dense and heavy and you know you can keep a door open with it. <laughs> it's, it's that hard. <laughs> um, no, this is a light sponge. So I'm going to just quickly show you how I incorporate the mixture. So a third of the flour, and I just guessed this, you know, there's no rocket science on it. And sieve it in, I don't know, a gentle tap, all right. Now I've added the vanilla essence to the egg already so I don't have to incorporate that. And then a third of the egg. Okay. And it's just guesswork. You know. <laughs> and then starting on a very, very low setting you begin to cream that um, ingredient through with the butter and the sugar. So I'm going to start that now and show you what it looks like once I've done that stage. I'll be right back. So I've incorporated um, a third of the flour and the egg into the bowl and mixed it through. And I will repeat that um, another two times. So a, 
another half of the flour and another bit of the egg and then mix that in and then finally the last slot. I know it sounds long and laborious and you know um, there are a lot of recipes out there that uh, they just chuck it all in. <laughs> um, but I'm a baker um, in essence. I'm, I've been baking um, for a long long time. Uh, over 25 years. <laughs> I'm showing my age now. Oh my dear. Um, and I've tried every way um, and this is the most reliable. It tastes amazing and uh, you know follow it and let me know what you think and I can assure you you won't be disappointed. So I'm going to add another third of the flour leaving a little bit left for the last lap. Um, sieve that through. A third of the egg. Leaving a little bit for the last lap. And I'm going to repeat. I'm going to mix that through. Add the final amount of flour and egg. Beat it again. And I'll come back to you at that point. So leave me to it. <laughs> See you soon. I've creamed the remaining um, flour and eggs together in the mixture and we're ready to put it into the giant cupcake. The another great thing about the silicon ones is because they're on a separate, they're separate. On the steel ones they're in one piece like they're attached and the only problem is this takes longer to actually bake than that one so because these are separate I can take this one out and leave that one in the oven with the solid piece you've just got to grin and bear it and sometimes this can become very dry and nobody likes a dry cake so another reason to purchase the cheaper version of the silicon uh, cupcake tin so we're going to start loading oh, help me I hope I don't mess up because you know this is live coming at ya I don't edit I don't do reruns if this is wrong it's wrong <laughs> okay that'll do for now just placing that mixture in and I'm just gently with the spoon rocking backwards and forwards now there is another part to this actually just trying to find it but I don't use it it comes with the pack it's this. It's got a little bit of butter in because I was going to grease it to show you. But And you're meant to place that in to leave a, a delve in the middle and so that it comes up at the sides. But I don't fill my uh, giant cupcake like that. I don't put cream in one big blob in a hole in the middle. So I just fill it like this. <laughs> I'm not going to fill it right to the top because there will be... Um, some rise in it because it's a sponge but I'm making sure that it goes right to the edges like that and I've left about an inch maybe a little bit less than an inch it doesn't matter if it rises above because I can always trim and this will take longer and it is trial by error Depending on how large your eggs were will depend on how soft the mixture is and if it's wetter than someone who's used smaller eggs it will take longer. So when I say 40 minutes for example, play that by ear, use your own discretion. If it bounces back or if you put a cocktail stick and pierce the middle and it comes out clean, you usually find your sponge is ready. If it's not, put it on for another five minutes and then check again and so on. So I'm going to now fill the lid and again use your own discretion. Um, for my lid, just leave that there. again the same motion and leaving a little bit and rocking motion just to make sure that the 
entire and pressing down so it sinks right to the bottom and that it's totally touching the edges of the mould because it's basically a cake mould. Now there is a little bit of cake mixture left but not a great deal. I think I'll get a cupcake out of that you see. Bonus treats for the chef. So this is going to go into uh, the oven and I'm going to put it in for uh, to begin with 40 minutes on 160 if it's fan assisted um, centigrade or 180 if it's not fan assisted and I think that's gas mark 3 and again it's important that you don't keep opening the oven <laughs> please um, try and let it go for the full duration uh, unless it's burning obviously and your fire alarms are going off but uh, that's basically it and I'm going to show you what it looks like when it comes out the oven I'll be right back Okay, I'm back and they're out of the oven. Ta-da! Now, <laughs> the top of the cupcake, or which will be the top of the cupcake, as I said before, doesn't take as long as the base because there's more volume in the base. So this actually took 48 minutes. Not 40, it took 48. But as I said before, trial and error. Try it for 40 and then another five minutes if it's required and so on. This took 55. Can you believe it? Can you Adam and Eve it? So this has literally just come out of the oven. That's hot. Now as for this one, it's been out for a little bit. I'm going to show you how to remove it. Oh dear, what am I doing? I'm asking myself something here. But I'm just going to use a cool knife just to gently pull away from the sides. Not touching the cake, I'm touching the mould. And I'm pulling it away. Pulling the mould away. You can't do that with a tin. You can't. This is why I recommend these. If you're going to try a giant cupcake, use the silicone. Awesome it is. So now I've kind of tried to bend it, <laughs> I'm going to try and pop it out. Oh dear, what am I doing? Now, actually, before I do, I'm just going to trim the top ever so slightly. I can do more trimming later, but I'm just going to take this crust off. Now it's still warm. Don't try this at home. <laughs> um, and I can eat that later. <laughs> Why not? I mean, come on. You know, perks of the job. So, I've just took the top off. The steam is coming out because it's hot. And we're going to turn it onto its bottom. Turn it upside down. But before I do, I'm just going to put a little bit of grease paper, paper on the bottom here, just for ease. You can use a cooling tray. I haven't got one at, at the moment because I wasn't going to do this, but I am. <laughs> so you place it over and just very gently remove. How good is that, guys? How good and simple was that? No residue left. Nothing in the bottom because if you remember, we put some greaseproof paper in which I can remove gently how good is that so I'm gonna let this cool now so if you want to watch me um, decorate this and cover it with uh, crumb coat it and then decorate it with fondant watch part two of how to make a giant cupcake thanks for your time bye I'm off to eat that now. Oh, I'm starving. <laughs>